May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Here's a different gospel that is slightly more appetizing than the one we just heard. If you are searching, you must not stop until you find. When you find, however, you will become troubled. But your confusion will give way to wonder. So that's from the Gospel of Thomas, which some of you here will know. is a gospel that was found in a cave, Nag Hammadi, in 1945 by a Bedouin shepherd. And we've come to learn, along with the Gospel of Mary, the Gospel of Judas, uh, the Gospel of some of the other people who were around back then, that they did not make it into the canonical Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we're very familiar with the, the scripture. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. But the Gospel of Thomas adds a truth that I think we know. When you find what you're looking for, sometimes it might upset your entire world. Sometimes it might turn everything upside down in a way that causes you to see completely differently. That's what we're finally getting to on Sunday number five of listening to Jesus talk about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. This is a hard teaching to accept. Every time I read it on a Sunday morning, I think, I hope no one's in church for the very first time today. Right? It's a hard one to hear. Just, it's hard for us to hear it, as difficult maybe, because we do this communion thing, you know, Sunday in and Sunday out. It's a part of who we are, and it has been for thousands of years. Have you ever had to try and explain the Eucharist to somebody who knows nothing about Christianity? What we do in eating Jesus? This is very, very strange. It does not surprise me that at this point, These disciples, which we can tell from this gospel reading, is larger than the group of 12. That some of the disciples at this point say, you know what, I'm out. This one, this is the straw that broke the camel's back because they are so literally taking in what Jesus is telling them. That he wants to be known within them. That they have to take in God to abide in God. It is a hard teaching. A couple of months ago, back in October, on a beautiful fall day, when it was still like 70 degrees, but you could tell fall was in the air, you know, and the leaves are kind of changing, but they haven't completely changed. A friend and I went to the Renoir exhibit at the Phillips Collection in DC. I don't know if any of you saw that. And the Phillips Collection, if you're not familiar with it, it was my first time. It's small. It's a house, right? It's not like a big, giant museum. And it's tucked away in a neighborhood. And so as we were parking the car, um, there was a young bride and groom. It was their wedding day. And they were clearly taking advantage of wherever it was they were getting married around there, but taking advantage of this beautiful scenery and this beautiful day to take some photographs. And so... She looked beautiful, he was handsome, they had the beautiful bridal party around them. She was doing some directing of the photographer in between, you know, looking coyly down and the two of them smiling into each other's eyes and, you know, just beaming with that love. And it was lovely. But as I turned away, a slightly cynical part of me thought to myself, oh, the first day. (laughs) Just the first day. Because we tend, and society really enforces the idea that the wedding is the culminating event. Oh no. (laughs) It is merely the first step, right, in a long journey. So then we went into the Phillips collection, and of course when I bought my ticket, the woman said to me, well, do you know how to get to the Renoir exhibit? And I said, oh yeah, I'm fine, because I'm a New Yorker and I don't want to pretend like I don't know where I'm going all the time. But I didn't know where to go, and the museum was very crowded because this exhibit had just opened, and there was an event happening at the museum also. And I didn't know what the event was, but um, there were a number of people in wheelchairs, and um, a number of of people who seemed frail, elderly and frail, and I'm like, hmm. So in getting lost, I, I found myself on the bottom floor, I was supposed to be on three, 
and went to the elevator, and there was a sign, and it said something to the effect of art and Alzheimer's. And I thought, oh, okay. And it, it wasn't just a fundraising event. It was clearly there were people there who had Alzheimer's or dementia of some kind, and this was they were, they were participating in the Renoir exhibit and having a lunch. And so my friend and I get to the elevator. We step inside, and right behind us comes an elderly woman. Well, actually, she wasn't. She, they were in their 60s. And, um, but she did not look well. And she had a look about her that I've seen before. And if any of you have someone in your life who struggles or who knows um, dementia or Alzheimer's, um, it's sometimes a look of fear, of not knowing uh, where it is they are. And so the man that was with her helped her into the elevator, and the door closed, and she panicked. She says, where are we going? Where are we going? I said, we're just going up to three. We're just going up to three to see the exhibit. He was very calm. And then she turned to me, are you going? Are you going to this exhibit? And I said, yeah, yeah, we're going. Said, okay. She calmed down, and the elevator doors opened at two, not three. And another woman was going to get on, but it wasn't, we were going up. She was going down, so she had to get off. So this incited more panic in this woman about, well, what's happening? Why is it, aren't the doors closing? And he said, my love going to be okay, my love. It's going to be okay. And he was so calm. And you know that feeling you have when something's going wrong in a situation and there's nothing you can do and you don't even know the people, but that energy starts to pulsate around and you start feeling very uncomfortable? That's what I was feeling, but not her husband. He just kept putting his hand on her shoulder. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And she would calm back down, and then, you know, we got off and went off and went to the exhibit. And I thought to myself, and I turned to my friend and said, oh, if only that young couple getting their pictures taken could meet today, this couple, and what they're dealing with. Because that's a marriage. That's what, we don't know what's in store, but that's what it's all about. That's the hard teaching that very few of us would accept when we take these leaps out of love into marriage, into having children, into divorce, into moving, starting, beginning, ending, all these leaps we take where we have no idea what's on the other side. We have no idea the teachings that are coming our way, but something inside us is an eternal awareness that it is what we have come to know and believe and trust is the way to move forward. Something connects us with an eternal truth and awareness. That's what Jesus is talking about. By the time he gets to the end of chapter 6, with this reiteration and reiteration of the sacramental awareness of taking in the bread of life. Those disciples have heard one hard teaching after another. Right in chapter 1, Nathaniel looks at Jesus and says, what good could even come out of Nazareth? The minute he sees Jesus, he refuses to recognize the Holy One because he's from a place he doesn't like. How many of us know that teaching? It's a hard one. Just a few verses later, Jesus takes those disciples and goes into the temple, the holiest of holies, where they have been practicing their faith for years. And he turns over all the tables and says, stop making my father's house a marketplace. They must have been shocked. And people have been trying to overturn the institution of the church from time immemorial since then. And we still wrestle with it today. Come to me, Jesus keeps reminding them. Come to me. Right before this, Jesus was at a pool of water where a man laid on a mat, crippled. And he asked that man something that I bet no one had ever asked him before. Do you want to be made well? And the man said, I do. Well, then take up your mat and walk. And everybody around there, they got really mad about that. And he turned to them and he said, you know, you all keep looking in this text for the word. That's not the word. I'm the word. The word is me. I am bringing you the word of eternal life. And then he goes to that woman at the well She's there by herself because she's terrified of what people think about her because she's had five husbands. And he says, I know you. And something in her knows him. And she says, I want that living water 
too. Don't you guys worship on a special mountain? He's like, no. The time's coming where you're going to be able to worship in spirit and in truth. It's not about a mountain or a place or a church or a building. It's about abiding in God. So the disciples have heard one hard teaching after another. And some of them, they just can't take it in right then and there. And Peter, God bless him, in this moment he's able to say, well, I don't know what else to do at this point, God. I don't know. But somehow I've come to believe that something in you is eternally true and it's connecting with something in me. So I'm going to keep going with you. But then what does Peter do? Because we know the end of the story. You know, he, he has his moment of doubt too. Now, I don't know that guy. The one getting crucified? No, no, no. I, I'm not a friend of his. But doesn't he come back? Doesn't Jesus want him back? Right? So this taking in of bread and wine, this body and blood, born again, one more time. Help me, God, again today, abide in you as you abide in me. Help me, God, again today, see the sacraments around me in so many interactions in this glorious, beautiful place where we live and walk outside. Help me, God, today see where you are challenging me through some hard teaching to trust that you are calling me to be your disciple in the world. Just this day, seek sacraments everywhere. Amen.